Hi, it's Maxine. <laughs> I'm dressed like a disco ball because it's kind of a special video. Um, I'm doing it a few days early, but I wanted, I didn't want to, um, record or post on April Fools because then it'll seem like a joke. So I'm technically like two days away from being three months sober, which, um, is pretty awesome. Um, I don't feel like, I mean, I'm 35 now. I think like by, by the time I hit 30, I pretty much never drank excessively. Um, maybe that year was like the last year I ever like drank in excess. Um, not only did I, you know, have my home daycare, like I, you know, I needed to be a professional inside and out of the home, but, um, some things had occurred in the past and, but mainly it was just that I was dedicating so much of my time to working like five days a week for the kids, hardly taking time off, not really having much of a social life anymore. Um, never drinking like, you know, on nights, almost never like before I have to work in the morning. But, um, so you're, you might be wondering, well, why would you quit <laughs> if you don't necessarily have a problem with it? But the thing is, like, I have a family history of alcoholism. I think pretty much every family out there probably, there's a degree of it somewhere. Um... So I just saw firsthand how it impacts people, like how it changes people, not for the better. And, you know, that, that wasn't the whole reason that my childhood was miserable, like due to the actions of my abuser who was an alcoholic, but, um, you know, he needed help in other ways. Like even when he was sober, he wasn't pleasant to be around. So. But I could just, there are a lot of things that occurred when I was young where I was put in dangerous situations due to alcohol. And then I myself like started drinking young. Like I'm sure a lot of us tr experience drinking before you turn 18. Well, in Manitoba, the legal drinking limit was or age was 18 in BC it's 19 in the States it's like 21 and other places have different laws but um yeah I started drinking socially like parties at things pretty young which I mean the thing with that is like okay, well, I was just kind of doing what everyone else was doing, and there were some fun times, but there were a lot of really unpleasant experiences with that as well, because I just kind of, sometimes when I would drink, all the emotions of what was going on at home would come out, so it's like I would, um, you know, just start crying and stuff just like really uncomfortable situations had happened when I started drinking young so the thing I regret most about drinking so young is just that our brain doesn't stop developing till we're like in our like I don't know 26 to 28 I believe so sometimes I wonder like you know I didn't know I was autistic at the time but sometimes I wonder if like what I had done to my body before um, my brain fully developed, like what, what kind of impact that has made on me. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, when I started drinking at the legal age, when I started hitting the bar with my friends, at first it was like, I pretty much had to be like near blackout drunk to enjoy myself. I know that's like, it's common, but it also sounds really dangerous. It sounds kind of silly to some people, but um, like 
it was just this all my senses were so heightened like the lights the music the energy the vibration the the noise like talking and everything it was just like a lot so I also was just like very stiff and rigid and like uncomfortable and like always thinking all eyes are on me or something not like in a conceited way just like in a you know having anxiety type of way so eventually drinking made me feel like really positive um it gave me like more rhythm and <laughs> the ability to like learn how to kind of dance and have fun and feel good in my body and um then eventually I realized like how I was less stiff and um you know helped me meet new people as well but if that, another thing I realized is um I it like numbed my pain so not only was it numbing my senses but it was numbing I have fibromyalgia which Sometimes I think like, okay, I was diagnosed kind of in my early to mid twenties and then now I feel like I've pretty, I'm pretty good at managing it now because of all of these unhealthy habits I've got rid of as well as a couple other things. But, um, when I was young, it, I, I kind of think that I've had fibromyalgia. Well, I actually think it's EDS. I did this whole other video where I actually have more of the characteristics of EDS than actual fibromyalgia, but I don't know if people could have both or what the correlation is, but I need to see a specialist. But the reason I'm not just calling it EDS right now is because I haven't been formally diagnosed with that, but I'm like very, very certain it is. So I think I was dealing with pain at a really young age and that could explain why, you know, I wasn't like horribly overweight when I was a kid. I was just like bigger. And then there was a point I did get very overweight and I lost weight and I was active, but I always kind of struggled with pain. Like I couldn't keep up with others the way the other kids could. And my dad was a chain smoker as well. So my lungs were affected at a young age, but, um, I just noticed that with the drinking it's like I couldn't feel the pain until well you know at the end of the night when you take your heels off and it's like so horribly uncomfortable like I could feel that but it was like a temporary like feeling numb and it obviously made me feel happier made me feel more confident like I obviously very much an introvert I I don't know like I feel like I'm an I don't like put myself into categories very often like even at a young age like I had lots of piercings and stuff and then I kind of dressed more edgy and I liked punk music but I never called myself a punk because I liked all these other things like I still like pop music I still like going to the bar I still like rap and all this stuff so but but yeah so when it comes to being an introvert extrovert Maybe like when I'm at my very best, like when I'm where I'm supposed to be, like with, in terms of my weight and my health and all that, maybe I'm, I lean a bit more towards an extrovert. Like I feel like I am kind of a chatty person and they can kind of just talk to anybody and I'm, tr I try to be nice to everybody. And sometimes I notice I, I can see how what true intro, introverts are like I, and I can also see what true extroverts are like and I don't feel like either one I feel like I'm just in the middle and so that's kind of what I mean about putting myself into categories or when people do that like when people say oh I'm a Taurus so I'm stubborn well if you're constantly telling yourself oh I'm stubborn I'm stubborn I'm stubborn you're almost like not you're almost talking yourself into um, not being able to change because you just think like I do believe in some astrology and stuff and that was one of my very special interests at a very young age but uh, I maybe one of the reasons I kind of got out of it a little bit is because of those strong characteristics and beliefs that it, it does 
have and portray people as so and I kind of at a young age got myself into this mindset of not think like um oh I'm a Capricorn so I'm this and this and that well it turns out well I have <laughs> my rising and um moon is Libra so maybe I'm just a very airy Capricorn <laughs> I don't know but um anyway so back to this though the main thing just with um being an introvert extrovert it definitely made me feel like more of an extrovert it definitely got me t like you know Whenever guys had shown an interest in me when I was younger, before I started getting into the bar phase of my life, I kind of was just like way too shy and didn't know how to like communicate. And I was also very locked in my mind at the time with my autistic traits. Like I just couldn't come up with the right thing to say or I always felt judged or I would very much shy away from any kind of attention that I would get from guys. And I think a lot of that too also had to do with like some of the things I had experienced and witnessed as a child. But when I got to the bar phase of my life, I was like boy crazy <laughs> for a bit and had some, I had some fun experiences, but I had some pretty horrible experiences as well as most do and um you know i s depending who i was hanging out with like some people were more of excessive drinkers and some people were more responsible so if i kind of adapted to whoever i was sort of hanging around with but i you know i was one of the people who tended to drink like more than the others and and then that kind of put me into dangerous in bad situations at times unfortunately and I started to you know really rely on it heavily socially so I could go a week if there wasn't anything going on or if I just was too broke to do anything in my social life like not like one-on-one -on -one hanging out but just like out partying as most people do in their early 20s but I um I just noticed that I started using it heavily socially and especially in relationships with men and um, especially intimate relationships. Um, like I had like even some relationships that were not that serious like if a guy was coming to hang over hang out at my apartment um I would like drink beforehand like I just felt really uncomfortable in my skin like or just the nerves or something like I just I think that's typical and they make it typical like when you watch you know shows and movies and things like that like people do take a drink to, or take a shot to like calm their nerves and stuff so it's just like something that was very normalized right for everyone but um you know like I remember pretty much all my sexual relationships I was like under the influence and I remember the first time I was intimate without and I like cried because it was just so um I just felt like so uncomfortable in my in my skin again like at the time I didn't know I was autistic I wasn't diagnosed so I think I can attribute a lot of what I was feeling to that, like just also like maybe jumping into things too early with people that I didn't fully trust or, but I think that at the time, like even if I really did trust the person, it had nothing really to do with them and it was more so just what I was feeling like insecure about my body and everything else. I just felt like I couldn't have fun the way I could when I was drinking so I think that probably is relatable to some people um and then it's probably very unrelatable to others who started having 
like intercourse or sexual experiences before they started drinking. But, um, and also, unfortunately, like, it ruined some of my friendships. Like, um, like even some of my friendships where we never fought sober with one another but just one bad instance and then I was just like cut from people's life like I was just nothing and I didn't matter and it was like it's like they didn't realize it was like the alcohol that whatever happened that caused the conflict it wasn't like me but I've always just like felt disposable pretty much and especially because the relationship in the household being so toxic but um so there was a time in my life where I kind of stopped getting to the blackout trunk stage and I could have fun without um getting excess but then you know some things might happen in my life and then there was like, okay, so that point in my life where I got help for the first time with my mental health and then I moved back from BC to Manitoba, that was probably the worst time in my life when it came to drinking excessive, excessively. I was like going out to a bar my friend worked at and there was just some pretty bad experiences with that and um, I think I kind of like shook, I got like I scared myself out of wanting to do that as often and um, so also within the time that I stopped drinking and partying as much um, I also just like was deciding what I wanted to do as a career so that's when I opened my home daycare which were like the greatest four years of my life. It was just such a happy, awesome time with kids and families that really loved me and trusted me and showered me with compliments. And not that it was like always perfect. There were always, in any environment, in any workplace, there's always going to be something that happens. But um, I miss it a lot and I wish it was something I could still do to this day, but I do financially I can't own a home on my own and having a daycare it's very low income like I was making maybe like 175 to 250 a day depending and then uh, I knew people like one parent in particular was making a hundred an hour <laughs> Like, here I am taking care of little lives, like, people's entire world, like, the future generations, like, making sure they are happy, healthy, safe, cooking them nutritious food, um, and making, like, about one to two hours of someone's day in wages. <sighs> But, I mean, I wasn't in it for the money, but it's just that it would be nice if it was um, something that I could do that I could pay all my bills on my own and mortgage and everything independently. But that's not going to happen unless I um, someday am lucky enough to meet a partner where they would be supportive of me opening a daycare and it would have to be done in their home. So there's a lot of factors and it just doesn't seem like it's probably gonna happen and I am lucky that I have a job right now that's um that'll be good really really good for me long term if it's full if I get into full time I'm just doing on call right now but it's um a job that I'm very proud of getting and it shows that I have a good you know criminal background check and all of that so that's something that makes me really proud um, but anyway, so, so during that time when I opened my daycare, I could go a really long time without drinking. Like it was really only like for social occasions and, and not that I didn't like overdo it a few times, but it, 
Like I'm very thankful for that time in my life because in some ways not only did it like give me so much value, so much um, motivation, so much like purpose in life, it, um, it also influenced me to like make better choices about my body and I, you know, I actually lost 70 pounds during that time as well, but then the stupid pandemic hit and I just was like so depressed and it just affected everything and then I gained everything back, but I'm finally down 40 pounds from my max, so I'm on my way to getting back to feeling in a really good place. Like with my body, I'm feeling really good in other ways, but I, that is the, pretty much the only thing I'm like really working on right now. Wow, this video is all over the place because it's like, well, I'm working on that, but I also would like to go back to therapy someday to do more in-depth therapy about my childhood. Um, so after the pandemic and then moving to BC and then finally starting a new job, I was doing delivery for a while, like um, parcels delivery. I started drinking again and I was the thing that was different about it this time is I was drinking more solo so it started it was like once a week and then it started to become like more often and you know even once in a while I'd have the urge I'm like well let's just get drunk tonight and I drink like a whole bottle of wine to myself and I just didn't feel anything <laughs> Like, if nothing's going on and there's no, um, nothing, like, exciting happening, then it's, like, kind of pointless. But I guess it was helping me deal with stress and depression and stuff. Or I thought it was. But, um, so that's when I kind of realized that this isn't some, this is bad because of my family history and everything. And... And then around the same time, like, Matthew Perry died. And no, I'm not, like, the biggest Matthew Perry fan who ever lived. And I'm not, like, a huge Friends fan. Like, I've seen Met or every single episode, I'm sure, when I was younger. And I do enjoy the show. But when that happened, it was kind of just very eye-opening in the message. And it was, like, I've been thinking about wanting to do this for a long time. Where I just wanted to quit drinking altogether. And it wasn't so much for myself. Because I truly do not have like a problem with it the way I kind of used to but it was more so as a protest about how it affects others and ruins lives ruins children's lives who didn't ask to be exposed or in that environment and you know losing their parents due to alcoholism and um, just ruining families ruining relationships turning people into people that they're not like you know who you are when you're not drunk is who you are like when you're drinking the, that can just bring out these ugly characteristics that doesn't still doesn't make it who you are it's just like it just changes something in you and so I just kind of had this realization like for a long time I just been saying I'm just gonna not drink and I kind of was hoping that if I like told some of the people around me or in my life that they would say yeah that's a good idea I don't want to drink anymore either like but no people <laughs> it's maybe due to my autism like having those that strong sense of justice and like beliefs that a lot of people don't have um I just, anyway, it's something I'm doing on my own, but I'm doing it for the people who struggle and the people whose lives have been ruined from alcoholism and drugs and everything, and I'm doing it for me. Um, so I'm, when I'm doing it for me, it's knowing that I do have an addictive personality as well, because when I was younger, it's like, okay, well... When I wasn't eating excessively, I was drinking more. When I wasn't, um, it's kind of like 
trading different addictions and obsessions and things. So I, uh, so I can say that three months, I haven't probably gone three months without having a single drop of alcohol. Like I know some things have alcohol in it naturally, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like drugs, alcohol, nothing. And I was never like really into drugs. I tried some things, but when I say drugs, I mainly just mean marijuana because marijuana is like legal here in Canada now. But even that is something I didn't really enjoy for different reasons. And so to go three months without anything to me is like a huge accomplishment, whether I was really struggling with it in the beginning or not. Um, I think another thing too, other things that influenced me is like some things I enjoyed when I was young, like jackass, like, so like Bam's getting sober, is sober now, and Steve-O, and um, the heck's the other guy's name? Brandon Novak as well. So listening to their stories and their experiences like really kept me away from it as well because I think we just all have that in us and it only takes like one really traumatic event or something that can like completely change your life and or you just feel alone and you feel like you need it and or you feel like you need it socially or whatever the case may be and you're hiding it and using it as like your personality well I'm just proving to myself that I don't need anything like um any sort of dependencies um so I've let go of all these habits and dependencies I even quit coffee recently I'm about one to two weeks off of coffee I don't drink don't smoke don't do drugs don't even gamble anymore I don't so it's like I can officially say my very last bad habit to target is my weight with my sugar addiction. And because I've managed to end all these other things, I just know for sure that this is something I'm going to be able to conquer. And it'd be nice to maybe get back in the gym and really kind of use that as my outlet as well as some other positive outlets that I enjoy right now, which... One of them is making these videos to try to help people spread awareness on different subjects and um, it just, it makes me feel good. So that was my shoe. <laughs> anyway, um, so I probably should have given more examples and more statistics and like or I didn't give any like I should have made my video a bit more educational about alcoholism but um, maybe I'll include some links or I can just say you can google things about how it's impacted people's lives you can find books you can find statistics about what or scientific evidence about what it does to people and our bodies but um the very last thing I wanted to talk about was just like when I think about the future and not drinking the only thing I do think sometimes is like well I'm already so limited in all these ways like I'm gonna have to really find a partner who's very understanding <laughs> about everything like they're gonna have to be understanding about me making these videos and how they feel about that like is it gonna feel embarrassing to them or I have to find a partner who's completely non-judgmental somehow by the grace of God <laughs> it's gonna be really challenging to find a partner who's comfortable with all the things that I do like putting my life out there on YouTube um, you know, not even having coffee, not drinking, not doing drugs, not all these things. Um, and you know, I do feel a little sad thinking like sometimes it's nice when you're in a relationship and you just get a little like not drunk, not blackout, but just a little silly and you, and it can, it's kind of like a bond, but 
it's kind of like you, you share and you bond over and it just makes you a little bit more comfortable because I can be so um, reserved and rigid and it takes me a while to like really get out of my shell when I enter a new relationship so um, so I kind of feel sad thinking about those times where I'm not going to be able to just kind of like let loose a little bit if I enter a relationship but also on the other hand like I don't want to enter anything being other than authentically myself so I just need to let go of that thought and let it die because it's not really helpful or serves a purpose and who knows I might feel different about it in the future I could be one year in and decide well maybe I feel in control in all these ways in my life and if I've maybe lost weight and everything but I have a strong feeling that if I go without I'll go without it forever because I you know I went like 15 how many years I went like 15 or more years of being a vegetarian pescatarian without any meat or anything so I feel like there's a chance that I will go the rest of my life without ever doing drugs, alcohol, um, smoking, nothing. So that'd be kind of nice because I feel like in those early years of my life, damage was done to me like out of my control, but there are things I did to myself to poison myself. And so it would be nice to kind of try to spend the rest of my life living healthy to try to make up for some of the things that had gone on and um, just try to overall live a healthy long life the best I can. Our bodies are pretty remarkable and they can definitely heal like our livers and other parts of our body it's like we're capable when we get a scratch or an injury like over time it heals and our body kind of does that in a lot of ways, physically and mentally. So that's my um, future with uh, with that. And I hope I can influence at least, you know, some out there in the world to maybe consider that for themselves as well, whether they realize they have a problem or not, or um, to maybe start a uh, start a movement of like realizing we don't need it we don't need it to have fun we don't need it to make friends we don't need it to enter relationships we don't need it to whatever you're using it for to cope um, we don't need it as therapy so yeah um I think like every video I do is, you know, obviously my videos aren't for everyone. Like I'm not the most engaging, like, um, it's impossible to talk about subjects like this and depression and autism and childhood abuse and all the things I've talked about. It's impossible to talk about all that and not, um, it's impossible to talk about that and be like, <laughs> just so upbeat and so well for me anyway it's hard it's impossible for me because I am at this point where the mask is removed and this is just who I am and I don't feel like putting on this I could I could oh I could <laughs> I tried once in a video to like talk all charismatic or upbeat or how I like used to kind of trick myself into being this way and it's just feels so like I can't do it anymore <laughs> and it feels good to just be myself and who I am and have confidence in who I am and when I realize that I cannot you know not drink not smoke not do drugs not gamble not participate in all these things it makes me realize like I can I can accomplish anything I want in life I can achieve my goals I can I it's like willpower it's um it's about willpower, it's about the power of our mind and um, positivity and how 
what we say and think um, like we can achieve so yeah that's my video and thank you so much for watching I have some things to do today so I'm just thinking I'm gonna end this video I I'm starting to make lists when I do my video because it just helps me um kind of stay focused on what I want to talk about and it helps the videos go a little bit faster because if I don't have that list I'll kind of just branch off into a million different stories but yeah please like comment subscribe I appreciate it a lot um and see you soon have a good day